Get ready for the waterworks again! Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for another Top 10 Saddest Grey's Anatomy Moments. So pick me. Choose me. Love me. For this list, we're looking at more heart-wrenching moments across the Grey's Anatomy series. If you don't see the moment that created waterfalls for you, be sure to check out our first video of the Top 10 Saddest Grey's Anatomy Moments. A do-over. You know, without all the mistakes, just slate wiped clean. Number 10. Christina leaves Seattle. So, this is goodbye then? Last night wasn't enough? No. It's never easy saying goodbye to a friend, whether or not they are fictional. Throughout the episode, we're waiting to finally say goodbye to Christina after 10 seasons. The final surgery and some of the farewells are certainly upsetting, but the biggest moment that made us choke up was her final goodbye to Meredith. You and I are not finished. George is dead, and Izzy is gone, and it is supposed to be you and me and Alex, and now nothing is finished. At first, it's a little lighthearted, like watching a mother give his or her child a list of chores. Don't let Owen get all dark and twisty, mock Alex at least once daily, the usual. Then things get serious as Christina says a few things that hit too close to home for us. At least we got to see the two dance it out one last time. Number 9. Meredith has a panic attack. <laughs> Working in a hospital can be a traumatic experience, so it's hard to imagine being in Meredith's shoes when she's suddenly attacked by one of her patients and bedridden for weeks due to a loss of hearing. <laughs> the hardest part about this comes after a troubling experience with her children, which causes a panic attack and some difficulty breathing. It's truly heartbreaking to see someone's kids say they don't want to see their own parents. We can't ignore what happens later, though, when Meredith meets her attacker. After a few words from him and not much else from Mare, we experience a poignant moment between the two as she reaches for the man's arm, showing he's forgiven. <sighs> Number 8. April and Jackson sign divorce papers. At work? That's where you decide to do this? You want to lower your voice? Why does it matter how loud my voice is when 35 people just saw me get served with divorce papers? What could be more heartbreaking than finding out your significant other wants to file a divorce? So before the famous fortune cookie argument makeout session, the episode immediately hits us with a divorce signing before we see the history between the two. April asks Jackson if he's sure about the divorce, but the silence is more than enough. You want this? Do you really want this? I know, I know the siren sound. There's not even a moment of hesitation about his decision, leaving April to believe the marriage was a total failure. Even while the remainder of the episode shows us how these two worked, the haunting image of the divorce papers, coupled with a few disagreements, tells us otherwise. Number 7. Callie loses custody of Sophia. Oh, I'm gonna miss you so much. You know what? Mama loves you so, so much. I will see you again before you know it. I know. As Meredith puts it, a true mom would rather give her baby up than have it ripped in two. But what happens when there are two true mothers? Callie almost died giving birth, but tried making Arizona out to be the bad guy. Arizona, however, was better for Sophia's well-being. Seeing these two butt heads was just as sad as April and Jackson's divorce. We'll see you in court. And the kid gets torn apart. While many were rooting for Callie, the tears came flooding in when we found out Arizona won the case. Take whichever side you want, but we can all agree that at the end of a custody battle, nobody truly wins. How the hell did this happen? Number six. Penny tells Amelia how Derek died. When you and I talk. That is a, a good idea. Actually, no, want to give him no, some space? No, no. She was there. Can I want to hear what happened. Did you make a mistake? Did you, Amelia? <laughs> tell me what happened. Damn, season 12 was a rough one. When Penny shows up to dinner at Amelia's house, the tension gets high, and Meredith does not do a good job at hiding it. A beer and a margarita coming right up. She's being weird, right? She's being nice to me. 
which is weird. It isn't until the dinner begins that it really hits the fan, as Amelia figures out Penny is the same doctor who treated her brother before his death. Seeing all the details, from Derek's condition to Penny admitting her failure as his doctor, being unloaded on Amelia is hard for us to watch without shedding a tear. It was too much for Amelia to bear, and results in Penny being told to leave. I'll say anything to you before you killed him. Can you tell me what his last words were? That's enough. Get her out of my house. Number 5. April thinks Jackson died in a bus explosion. <laughs> Along with being one of the saddest, this was also one of the most intense moments across the entire series. When a speeding bus loses control during a rough storm, the doctors rush outside to assist. Upon hearing a little girl is trapped inside, Jackson rushes back in the flames to save her. Why don't we go find your mommy, huh? Yeah, come on. I know where she is. We'll go find her right now. It's a race against time before a fuel leak ignites. And then boom. It's agonizing to see April's horrified face, to see Jackson go inside an exploding bus, and then possibly his death. Yes, we said possibly. Thankfully, we see Jackson emerge with a girl in his arms, but that moment was all too shocking for us. Please, Grey's Anatomy, never pull that stunt again. Number 4. Into You Like a Train Dr. Shepard, Bonnie and I, are we gonna live through this? Oh, that's just morose talk. I'm sorry, dear. Doctor. We're gonna do everything we can, Mr. Man. When a massive train accident leaves passengers in critical condition, a woman and a man named Bonnie and Tom are bound together in surgery from being impaled by a metal pole. With her aortic injuries, her chances of survival are extremely slim no matter what we do. While comforting her, Bonnie asks Tom if he believes in heaven. And while Tom's yes is resounding, Bonnie's answer is less than relaxing. Tom even tells the doctors to save the younger Bonnie's life at the expense of his. The entire episode has us bawling our eyes out, and especially so when we find out that Bonnie is a lost cause, and things end in her death. Time of death, 349. Number 3. George's Reveal, 007. He saved my life. He threw me out of the way. Gray, get her out of here. It was supposed to be me under the bus. <laughs> He's all alone. They don't even know who he is, please. I, I... In an attempt to save a woman's life, a mysterious man is hit by a bus and brought into Seattle Grace Hospital, dubbed none other than a John Doe. When Meredith goes to check on him, the patient grabs her hand and keeps tracing numbers with his finger. It's at this particular scene when we finally figure out through our tears who the patient is, the surgical resident with a license to kill, George O'Malley. It's George! It's George! Despite the best effort from his peers, it was the last time we got to see George before he hit the flat lines. What's sadder was that George was about to join the US Army. You changed my life. Did you say it? Number 2. Charles Percy's Death I'm dying, right? Didn't think we were going to forget about this one, did you? The final moments of intern Charles Percy were not easy for fans to sit through. Due to a police lockdown, Dr. Bailey finds the elevators were inaccessible with no other way to the OR, and she must accept that her colleague is dying. The elevators, they're off. Oh. The elevators are working! The elevators are working! So that he does not die alone, Dr. Bailey and patient Mary stay with him until he takes his last breath. Touching, horrifying, and depressing, this moment destroyed all hope for us that Percy would make it. Yes, our tears began hitting the floor right when the song started playing. You tell her I was a catch, you tell her I was a hot, hot catch, and she missed out on a great guy. Before we get to our saddest pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Is he mad at me? You shouldn't be watching this. Oh no. Mm. 
Number one, April loses her and Jackson's baby. And you're gonna get to hold that baby. And you'll pray for him and sing to him. You're gonna look at him. You're gonna look at him and memorize every little detail of his face. And you will do that as long as he lives. Oof, this one just hit us too hard. The death of a newborn is never easy to digest, and this was heart-wrenching for everybody. Appropriately named All I Could Do Was Cry, the 11th episode of the 11th season showed April and Jackson spending their first few and last moments with their child. The birth and death of Samuel Norber Avery happened too quickly for us to comprehend that the moment feels all too mournful. The writers just like to use April and Jackson to make us cry, don't they? Do you agree with our list? Which moments were the biggest tearjerkers for you? For more moving top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. So please shut up and get it!